Amen. Amen. Your pastor loves you. And he's, he's so happy to see you today. It's a great blessing to have you today here. Amen. Amen. You are the joy of my ministry. Every time I think about you, my heart uh, gladdens. Because I have seen uh, Dr. P and Joseph and Alfred, and others who are not with us last Sunday, I want to request you to bear with us. We do a little bit of revision so that they can catch up with us. So I'll ask someone who needs to once read the Bible to read for us from uh, Timothy chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 11 again. Basi ningependa yule ambaye anatusomea Biblia tusomee waraka wa Paulo wa kwanza wa Timotheo sura ya kwanza. Chapter 1 verse 1 up to 11. Mstari wa kwanza hadi 11. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. To Timothy, a true son in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I urged you when I went, as I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to peoples, and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edifications which is in faith. Verse 5. Now, the purpose of the commandment in la is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some have strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of law, understanding neither what they, they say, not the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of blessed, of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. We began by looking at the relationship between Paul and Timothy. And we saw that Paul calls Timothy my beloved son in the faith. My beloved son in the faith. And we looked at reasons why Paul is calling Timothy that. We say that Paul is not the biological father of Timothy. And neither is he the one who preached to Timothy to get born again. We saw in the book of um, Acts chapter 16 Paul being given a testimony of Timothy when Timothy was already born again. But Paul looks at Timothy as a son. Because Timothy willingly submitted to the ministry of Paul. He was a minister in his own right. He was anointed in his own right. But he chose to submit himself. Not by force, not by coercion, he chose himself to submit under the ministry of Paul and therefore under the authority and care of the apostle. He gave Paul a childlike obedience. He obeyed him like the way a child obeys his father. And Paul valued him so much. Paul cared for him. He loved him. 
and he used him in ministry. Na hata akamtumia katika huduma. He became a trusted servant. Akafanyika mtumishi ambaye ni mwaminifu. Who could be sent? Ambaye angetumwa. And Paul will be comfortable. Na Paulo angeshawishika kwamba kuna amani. That Timothy will represent him exactly like Paul himself was there. Kwamba Timotheo atamwakilisha kikamilifu jinsi alivyomtuma. We looked at so many scriptures in the Bible. Tulitazama maandiko mengi kwa Biblia. To show that Paul loved and trusted Timothy. Kuonyesha kwamba Paulo alimpenda na alimtumainia Timothy. Why does Paul say my beloved son in the faith? Kwa nini Paulo anasema kwamba mtoto wangu ama mwanangu mpendwa katika imani? That word in the faith is important. Hilo neno katika imani la muhimu. Because it means that Paul and Timothy had a common persuasion. Kwa sababu inamaanisha kwamba Paulo na Timotheo walikuwa na ushawishi ambao unafanana. Had a common conviction concerning the gospel. Walikuwa na ushawishi ambao unafanana kuhusu injili. They believed in the same doctrine. Waliamini mafundisho yale moja. They believed in the same doctrine. Waliamini mafundisho yale wote pamoja. They taught the same doctrine. Walifundisha mafundisho moja. They lived out the same doctrine. Waliishi maisha yao kuonyesha mafundisho waliokuwa nafundisha. If you looked at the life of Paul, ikiwa ungetazama maisha ya Paulo and the life of Timothy, na maisha ya Timotheo, doctrinally there was no difference. Kimaandishi na kimaandiko na kimafundisho hakuna tofauti. They expressed the same faith. Wao walidhihirisha imani yao moja. And that's why Paul says, na ndipo sasa Paulo asema, my beloved son, mwanangu mpendwa in the faith katika imani in the faith katika imani is not possible to have a father son relationship in the church ni vigumu sana kuwa na uhusiano wa baba na mwana kanisani unless you are doctrinally united isipokuwa kwamba kimaandiko kimafundisho mmeshikamana amen amina unless you believe the same gospel isipokuwa kwamba mnaamini injili ile ile moja is not possible Haiwezekani na ni vigumu that you are kwamba wewe a son ni mwana who has your own vision ambao uko na maono yako to a father who has a different vision kwa baba ambao uko na maono tofauti praise god bwana asifiwe a son always supports the vision of the father mwana kila mara atasimama na mtazamo wa baba until such a time mpaka wakati ule that's mature enough ambao amekoma kikamilifu or already ama ko tayari to move to the next level kuondoka na achukue hatua inayofuata when we say the faith tunaposema imani we are saying that we are talking about all that christianity stands for tunasema ama tunamaanisha yote ambayo ukristo unasimamia the gospel injili ya yesu kristo they have the same view of the cross ule mtazamo mmoja wa msalaba they had the same view of the burial of christ walikuwa jesus walikuwa na mtazamo mmoja wa uzao wake kristo they had the same view of the resurrection of christ walikuwa jesus walikuwa na mtazamo mmoja wa ufufuo wa yesu kristo they had the same view of how to respond to the uh, walikuwa na mtazamo mmoja wa kuitikia kwa neno la kristo they had the same view walikuwa of how mta... to be christians walikuwa na mtazamo mmoja jinsi ya kuwa mkristo my beloved son in the faith mwanangu mpendwa katika imani praise god bwana asifiwe That's very important for all of us to remember. Ni jambo la muhimu sisi wote kuweza kukumbuka. Even if we are to be reminded every Sunday. Hata kama itabidi ukumbushwe kila Jumapili. Because the moment we align ourselves in in relationships, kwa sababu mradi tu tunaposimama sisi wote katika uhusiano, then we allow God's blessings and purposes to flow through us. Basi tuwaruhusu mpango wa Mungu na baraka za Bwana zionekane kupitia kwetu like the blessings of a family flows through a father to the children baraka za za familia zinapitia kwa baba alafu zinatirika hata kwa watoto is a matter of relationship hapo ni uhusiano amen amina praise god bwana asifiwe so we moved on to see tuliendelea ili tuone that paul is leaving timothy kwamba paulo anamuongoza timotheo in macedonia kule makedonia with a purpose na kusudi He leaves Timothy in Macedonia with a purpose. Samahani, anamwacha Timotheo kule Makedonia na kusudi fulani. And there are people that is calling Sam. Na kuna watu pale anawaita baadhi. He's telling them charge these people not to teach false doctrines. Anawaambia kwamba hawa watu wasomee kwamba wasije wakafundisha mafundisho potovu. Charge them command them instruct them wafundishe align them with the true doctrine hebu waweke katika imani aliyo ya kweli na mafundisho ya kweli so we have been looking at that basi tumekuwa tukitazama hayo and we understood na tukapata kuelewa that sound bible doctrine is essential for a church kwamba 
Mafundisho ya Biblia iliyo kamili ni muhimu kwa kanisa. Every other activity is good. Ma, 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 matendo mengine yote ni sawa. But every other activity in the church must stem from sound Bible doctrine. Lakini kila tendo au kazi yote kanisani lazima ichupuke kutoka kwa mafundisho yaliyo kamili. If we do things that are not built on sound Bible. Ikiwa tutafanya vitu ambavyo havijajengwa kwa msingi wake ni kwamba ni mafundisho kamili. We are building our house in the sand. Basi sisi tujenga nyumba yetu juu ya mchanga. And when some testing comes. Na wakati majaribio yatatoka mitihani. The house will come down with a great fall. Basi nyumba ile itaanguka na kuanguka kwake kutakuwa kukubwa. Everything we do in the church. Chochote ambacho tutafanya kanisani. Our serving Uhudumu kwetu must be on must be found on firm doctrine. Lazima ipatikane kwa um, mafundisho ambayo ni ya kweli kamili. Our worship ibada zetu na kuabudu even in songs hata katika nyimbo must be founded on sound bible doctrine. Lazima iwe kwa msingi ambao ni Biblia na mafundisho ya Biblia ambayo ni kweli. Amen. Amina. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. Because that is the only sure foundation. And therefore, Timothy was left in Ephesus to put the church in order and more so concerning truth. Very important. As long as you are here in this church, if something is taught here that you don't find it to be true, question it. You are not a robot. Question it. Question me. Niulize mimi. Tell me pastor why are you teaching like this and me I know it is like this. Niambie mchungaji mbona unafundisha hivi na hivi ila mimi najua iko hivi. Don't just say amen that is deep. It may be deep taking you to the grave. Don't just sit there and say whatever is, will be taught doesn't matter. Question it until you understand. Praise God. And I think I'm the only pastor who can give you that allowance. Because with other pastors you will be interfering with the Holy Spirit. But you interfere with my Holy Spirit. And tell me I don't understand. Milka used to ask questions in every service. Until she became the preacher of the gospel herself. Now she is all over. Sasa yuko kila pahali. Praise God. Sifa kwake Mungu. Even her songs are changing. Hata nyimbo zake zimebadilika. Amanyia msikizangi. They have changed. Zimebadilika. On her own. Lakini yeye kivi yake mwenyewe. Because now she's a preacher of the gospel. Kwa sababu ni mhuduma wa injili. She knows what to sing. Anajua kile cha kuimba. Pigia milka makofi. Hallelujah. <laughs> That is called transformation. Amen. Amen. If I go to heaven right now and God asks me about my ministry at least I can point at Milka. <laughs> but this one God I know how I found her. Praise God. So the issue was straighten the church concerning the gospel because the false prophets were interested in stories puerile stories childish stories genealogies where do you come from? From which family? Which has no basis in Christianity. We are all new creations in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter where you come from. That's why in this church we do our politics at home on Facebook. We do our politics at home on Facebook. You can know someone's political disposition on Facebook. But now when we come to church, we don't do politics here. 
Because we are not Jubilee or what is it? There are two movements. One of them is Azimio na Kwanza. We are not that. When we come here, we don't follow where we come from. When we come here, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. But in, the, in that church, they will follow your genealogy. And Paul calls them childish talk. Then he says the only place a man who does not know how to teach the gospel can hide is in the law of Moses. He says Asema, these people desiring to be teachers of the law verse 7 read verse 7 think about that a man standing before you with a Bible, desiring to be a teacher of the law, yet he understands not what he teaches or the things he affirms. Very dangerous person. A person who does not even believe in himself and he wants you to believe. Then he says, but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. So last Sunday we looked at so many ways that the law can be used lawfully. We looked at so many ways the law can be used lawfully. But the one that I like so much is that the law can be used to convict a sinner so the sinner can know that I'm a sinner. Because without the law, there's no transgression. But again, the law is used as a restrainer. It allows you to have false morality. You think that you are right. You are righteous. Because the, because the law is restraining you. The gospel does not restrain you. The gospel transforms you. But the law restrains you. Praise God. And even last Sunday we discovered many of us have not stolen not because we are good people, we fear the Lord. But one, because we don't have an opportunity to steal. Or we fear the law. Not because you are a righteous person. <laughs> but when the heart is transformed by the gospel, then you don't do things because you are restrained by a law or a regulation but because you love the Lord. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. He, feel, he, he believes in the gospel. The reason why he runs away from girls like Joseph is because he knows the Lord. Not because he fears punishment. So he lives a righteous life because he loves the Lord. He's a righteous man who lives a righteous life because he fears the Lord. So the Lord is the restrainer. So let's go to verse 9 today. Knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous person but for the lawless and insubordinate. So there's, there's a two way I want you to understand this part. There's something that we need to know. And we want to look at it from two perspectives. 
for a person who looks at himself and judges himself righteous. He says, you know me, I'm a good person. I'm not like these other people. Such a person, the law has no purpose in his life. But think about it. What is the purpose of the law? to expose you as a sinner to restrain you from sinning and to push you to salvation through Christ Jesus. Now, if you think of yourself as a righteous person, if you have self-righteousness, then the law is not made for you. In other words, you can never get saved. Did you get it? The law is not made for a righteous person. Why do I say this? Because Paul was addressing the false teachers who don't know what they teach nor what they affirm concerning the law. And Paul is saying the law is not meant for guys like these ones here because they think they know it all. They are, they are, they are the gift of God in this world. They are the righteousness of God minus Christ Jesus. Paul says the law is not meant for you. In other words, you will never get born again. Because until you are convicted, you can never come to the point of repentance. Number two, it means like this, the moment you understand that after believing in Christ Jesus, you became the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. You are blameless. You are a saint. You are a child of God. The same DNA of God is the one that runs through you. You know after believing in Christ Jesus, as he is in heaven, so are you on this earth. Then you understand you don't need to live your day by day life the restraining agency of the law. You don't need a law. You are a righteous person. You live naturally righteously without regulations, without any restrainer because now you are not a sinner but a righteous person through Christ Jesus. Praise God. So on which side are you? Don't answer. Because we have the self-righteous. I am good. I'm never wrong. Everything I do is good. I look good. My thoughts are good. Everything about you is perfect. But only in your own eyes. You don't need the law. You are already a Pharisee. But again, by grace I've been saved through faith and that's not of myself. It's the gift of God not of works so that I cannot boast before any man. And when I got saved I became the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus not by my performance not by my goodness not by my efforts not by my self-righteousness but by the grace of God. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Therefore, I live a righteous life not by effort but because Jesus lives through me. If you know that, you don't need the law as a rule of life. Your rule of life is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Your rule of life is the Holy Spirit. So do I, do I have people here who are born again? Who say that the law is not my rule of life? Praise God. 
Tiwe. So we are looking at the law is not meant for a righteous person. And we are supposed to be knowing this. Knowing this. That if you are a self-righteous person. If in your own eyes you are good. If in your own eyes you are perfect. If in your own eyes you are blameless. Then the law is not meant for you. Because the law is meant for people who know they are sinners. So that it can convict them. And point them to Christ for salvation. And other people that the Lord is not meant for, they are me and you who believe in Christ Jesus. And we are righteous through Christ Jesus. We know. Do you know that? That the Lord is not meant for a righteous person? Your rule of life is not a set of obligations. A set of regulations. A set of rules and laws. If you want to live your Christian life by regulations, then you need to get born again. So that you can now be guided by the law of the spirit of life through Christ Jesus. If you cannot do righteousness when you are alone. If you cannot live a righteous life. When no man is watching you. Then you want a set of regulations. I hope someone is hearing me. You don't need some people to watch you for you to live a righteous life. You don't need to fear sentencing, judgment, punishment for you to live a righteous life. You need to live a righteous life because you love the Lord and you are guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. But if we still live righteously because somebody is watching and then when no one is watching now we go back to our true senses. Then today is your day of salvation. Amen. We know that the law is not meant for a righteous person. Give me Luke chapter 5. From verse 27. It's a long story there, but I want, I want verse 31, but let's read the whole story. Luke chapter 5, verse 20, from verse 27. Luke, Luke 5, 27. Yes. After these things, mm -hmm. he went out and saw a tax collector mm -hmm. named Levi sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house, and there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And their scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, but those who are sick. Mm -hmm. I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Amen. Do you hear that? If in your own eyes you think I'm well you don't need a physician. You don't need Christ. Do you know the people that Jesus was dining with? Look at verse 30. And the scribes and Pharisees complained against his disciples saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? You may, not, you may not know what it means to be a tax collector those days. But someone who is a milker's age can understand. 
There's a time we had something called the Chiefs Act in this country. And the PC, Provincial Commission, that's why we don't know what a PC is. <laughs> provincial Commissioner <laughs> will order that every chief collects 20 shillings from every family in his area. Then the chief will come to your house. They will not collect 20 shillings. Where, where I come from, they will take your chicken. So how much is chicken? Chicken is not 20 shillings. By then it was about 200 shillings. Or 100 shillings. Let me say 100 shillings. So they have been sent for 20 shillings. But they come in your home. They take chicken. They cut bananas. They get everything they get around the caraway. So they go and sell. If they can get 100 shillings from you, 20 they'll take to the PC. 80 they'll keep for themselves. That's why Zakayo. That's why when he met Jesus Christ, what did he do first? What did he do? How many times? Four times. It was four times. Where did he get the four times? He has been looting from people. You see that? So imagine Christ Jesus is dining with such a like a man. They are hated in the community and they are feared. And these are now the ones that Christ is dining with them. Now on the other side, we have the Pharisees who think that they are the top uh, uh, cream of the community because they have self-righteousness. And Christ does not go to the Pharisees. He goes to the sinners and he says, I have come for those who are sick. Not who, who think they are well. The Pharisees were equally sick. But in their own eyes, they thought we are good. Christ says, in verse 32, I have not come to call the righteous. Now think about this. He just told them, unless your righteousness exists the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you can by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And now he's telling them, I have not come for the righteous. So they have a righteousness according to the law which cannot qualify them to enter into heaven and he's telling them, I have not come for you. In other words, if you continue like that, you can never be saved. Praise God. So the, the Pharisees were self-righteous. They were religious legalists. They were hypocrites. They had a works mentality. That you please God through works. And you receive good from God through works. You know, do good, get good. That was their mentality. They had a system of rules and regulations. And Jesus says, I have not come for you. I want those people who understand that they are sinners. The law has convicted them. The law has pinned them down. They have tried to keep the law. They have noticed they cannot achieve the requirements of the law. And therefore they have surrendered. They say they need help. Those are the people that Christ came for. If you are one of them, shout Amen. 
the things that the Lord does in the life of a person. The first thing that the Lord does to you is self-condemnation. Not self-righteousness. You feel, oh, wretched sinner that I am. Romans chapter 7 verse 24. Romans 7 24. Ben, pick it for us from verse 12 we see if we can just for, for our understanding. Eh? Therefore, the law is holy uh -huh. and the commandment holy and just and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin, through the commandment, might become exceedingly sinful. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I'm doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do, hold that on, on. I do hold not practice. Hold on. Who can, who, can, who can identify with that? What, what I'm doing, read, read again, Ben, read again. For what I'm doing, for what I'm doing, I do not I understand. Do not understand. Uh -huh. For what I will to do, uh -huh. that I do not practice. That I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Eh? Nitak twisters. So my dana bene sema. Asman tak twisters. For what I'm doing, uh -huh. I do not understand. Mm -hmm. For what I will to do, mm -hmm. that I do, I do not practice. Maybe you need to understand that will is what I desire, what I crave in me, kile, what I long to do. Kile natamania, kile shauku, natamania sana Use the word desire there. Neno For what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I do not understand. Uh -huh. For what I desire to do, uh -huh. that I do not practice. Uh -huh. But what I hate, that I do. We have the right desires. By the wrong actions. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> I'm not tricking you. I'm <laughs> Continue, man. Continue. If then I do what I will not to do, uh -huh. I agree with the law that it is good. But now, it is no longer I who do it, uh -huh. but sin that dwells in me. Now let me show you a secret of Paul. Paul disowns his sins. He says, I'm not the one doing it. It is sin in my flesh that is doing it. He, he separates himself from his sins. He says, me, I desire to do good things. But sin lives in my flesh. Okay, let's continue. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, uh -huh. nothing good dwells. Okay. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. In your flesh, nothing good nothing dwells. Nothing good dwells. I want to show you an experiment. When you rely on your own flesh, for you to live a Christian life, what kind of person you are. Continue, Ben. For to will is present with me. To desire is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. Ah. 19. For the good that I will to do, uh -huh. I do not do. Uh -huh. But the evil I will not to do, uh -huh. that I practice. Uh -huh. Now, if I do what I will not to do, uh -huh. it is no longer I who do it, uh -huh. but sin that dwells, dwells in me. You know, it's good to identify your enemies, isn't it? Yeah. What Paul is doing is identifying his enemy. 21. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good, mm -hmm. for I delight in the law of God uh -huh. according to the inward man. Uh -huh. But I see another law in my members wearing against the law of my mind uh -huh. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Now hold on there. 
What Paul is saying, I have tried to live by a set of laws and regulations to execute my Christian life, but I am not able. I'm not able. I am defeated. I can't produce righteousness. There's a battle inside me. I know inside me I desire to do good. Inside me, I know the law is good. I want to follow the law to the letter. But I have a fallen flesh which cannot respect the law cannot achieve the purposes of the law. Therefore, Paul reaches a place and he wants to give up the struggle of trying to live a righteous life by a set of regulations. Give it to him. He gives up. Verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of, the law of sin. I'll go to chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Chapter 8, Romans 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Wow. So what sets us free from the sets of regulations? What sets us free? If you live by the law of Moses, it's the law of sin and death. You must die. But look at this. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I want you to understand it from two different ways. If you go to committee, there are people who have done very heinous crimes. Like murder, like robbery with violence. They are put in a place that is called maximum prison. Where there is a maximum security. In that maximum prison, they are put in a section that is called condemned. They are condemned. They have no hope of leaving the prison because they are living there forever. They'll either be hanged or they'll die in prison. Now for all of us who are here, we have not been condemned to live a sinful life forever. Are you hearing me? There is now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. You are not in a place that you can't help yourself. There's the power of the Holy Spirit ready to help us. So when you hear there's no condemnation, you need to understand it from this viewpoint. You've not been put in a jail and being forced to live a, a sinful life all the days of your life. Number two, if you are in Christ Jesus, then you cannot be condemned because already you have crossed over from death into life. Praise God. So when you hear there's now no condemnation, it's like a coin with two faces. One face, I have already moved on from death into life. I will never be judged again. I'll never be condemned again. I'll never be sentenced to death. That's the meaning that they shall never perish because they have eternal life. But now again on the other side of the coin, you have not been condemned just to be a sinner forever. There's Christ in you. There's the Holy 
Holy Spirit in you. There is sanctification. And you can walk in righteousness. If you believe, shout a good amen. Now what Paul is saying, if, if you want power here, where do you put in? If you want power here, you put in a socket and you have power. But most of us want power from ourselves. So we plug into ourselves. So we are a powerful servant of God. I'm a powerful servant of God. You are depending on your flesh and you are waiting for your phone to judge. There's nothing good in your flesh. Don't depend on your flesh. Depend on Jesus. Amen. Say I depend on Jesus. First Timothy chapter 10. Chapter 1 verse 10 now. <laughs> I want the last part. First Timothy 1.10. Just as in verse 10. For fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Now the law is meant for sinners. And all the sins have been mentioned there. And we know that the law is meant to convict the sinner about condemnation, about judgment, about hell, so that you can turn to Christ Jesus. But now there's another form of sin that is being called everything that is contrary to sound Bible doctrine. It's a sin. For me to stand before you and teach you things and affirm things and shout about you things that are contrary to sound Bible doctrine is a sin. Is sinful. That's why when I used to do pastors' conferences, I used to tell pastors if you are not sure of what you are saying, just shut up and go home. Leave the pulpit for someone else. God is not short of ministers. We can't stand before people and tell them lies, fables, stories that have no basis in the word of God. But unfortunately, that's what people love. And that's a someone is preaching a whole Sunday. And people are shouting, Amen! Amen! A child preaching to children. That's child games. It doesn't matter how many people come to, to hear you. If you're a child, you're a child. If your stories are childish, they're childish. How do you waste a whole sermon talking about slim women that they are stealing people's husbands? I'm telling you, my friends, if I, if I preach to five people who want to hear sound Bible doctrine, I will be so happy than preaching to children who wants me to do PE in the church. Sound Bible doctrine. Let me tell you the meaning of the word sound. You've heard it being used even in our lives. You are in sound health. Therefore it means sound, sound mind. But there are people who have sound mind. The word sound means that 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 guarantees you safety. 
It guarantees you good health. It is not corrupted. It is pure. It is true. It is wholesome. That's the meaning of the word sound. Did you get it? It guarantees you good health. It guarantees you safety. It is not corrupted. It is true. It is pure. And it's wholesome. It is sound. Amen. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 1 and 2. And therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. So hold on. What is this? Sinfulness. Isn't you? So how do we throw it away? Verse 2. As new babes. Desire the pure milk of the word uh -huh. that you may grow thereby. It's pure milk. But let me tell you. Look at this statement. You need to lay aside sinfulness. God will not do it for you. You have to do it yourself. So how do you do it? As newborn babes. What does that mean? You should have an attitude of a child who still circles. Do you get that? Your attitude towards the word of God is that of a child who is still and then you desire. So let me ask mothers here. How does a baby desire milk? How? The baby cries uncontrollably until you put that thing in his mouth. Then you, you hear the baby say, mm, mm, yeah. have, you, have you heard of uh, the story of uh, the story that someone says that uh, he was sitting in a matatu? Then he saw a girl and a boy walking. And then the boy sat on the laps of the girl, the, the woman. The, uh, then, then, without shame, the boy started uh, looking at the chest of the, the, the woman. Without shame, the boy took the hand inside the, 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 the removed his food, and started eating in public. <laughs> That's what children who need milk do. They don't care whether you are in the public matatu. When they need milk, they need milk. So when pastor, pastor announces, I am here from July to February. Where, where, where are the children? To say Tuesday. Mm, mm. <laughs> they, they want, every day you want milk. Because God only supplies where there's a demand. Amen. Amen. So like a newborn, you need to cry and say it's not enough. Instead of saying, Pastor, you've been preaching for one hour. You tell me what they tell me in Kisumu. Ndelea. Like newborn babes. You need to desire. When will Sunday come? Will I go and hear this word again? Amen. Why? Because by it, you will do what? You will grow thereby. This is our food. This is our bread. 
This is the only thing that can cause us to grow. That's why Jesus, that's why Jesus said, uh, uh, John chapter 6, verse 37. John 6, 37. Mm -hmm. Verse 35. Chapter 6, 35. Mm. And Jesus said to them, I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Uh -huh. But I say to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Verse 33 to 33. Uh -huh. For the bread of God is for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So the bread of God is a man. Christ. Are you seeing that? Yes. yes. For the bread of God is he comes. Uh -huh. Then they say to him, Lord, give us this bread always. <laughs> they don't want it. Out of getting mkate ya kula. Wow, alikona fikiri kwamba ni mkate wa kula wa kiasi. Sio sisi peke yake to understand. Even them they never used to understand. Hata wao pia walikuwa na shida ya kuelewa. They had the bread of life. Walitaka mkate wa uzima. They said we want it now. Wanasema tu hutaka sasa. Okay, so let's see. And Jesus said to them, I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, mm -hmm. and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Mm -hmm. But I say to you that, but I say to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Mm -hmm. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. <laughs> so he says, I'm the bread of life. Go to verse 51. You know, begin with verse 48. I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. Your father, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and, and are dead. What he was telling them, this bread you are demanding of from me, the physical bread, your fathers ate. They died. But this is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. Wow. Uh -huh. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Now I want you to see the normal human reaction to the word of God. The Jewish therefore quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Uh -huh. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man uh -huh. and drink his blood, uh -huh. you have no life in you. Uh -huh. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, mm -hmm. and I will raise him up the last day. Mm -hmm. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is, my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Go to verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Why? Because they want physical bread, not the word of God. It's still so up to today. If you go to a church where people are being promised a visa to America, I can see a new car here. Someone is buying a piece of land in this place. I can see a, a woman getting married to a white man here. Even people's wives say amen. People want bread. They want physical bread. Something tangible. When you teach the word of God, the Bible says from that day on. From that, from that, day on? From that time, uh -huh. many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. So what happened? Then Jesus said to the twelve, mm -hmm. Do you also want to go away? <laughs> you think I'm arrogant? I learned from the best. If you don't want the word of God, go away. Find a place to go and do your jokes. You can use this time better than coming to sit here. And you're not interested in the gospel. Go. You can use that time better. 
Waweza kutumia muda kama huu vyema na bora zaidi. Kwa kina Andrew anaimbanga nyimbo ya kiluya hivi. Hebu tujue yeye mdoro mdosi barokalelala haleluya. <laughs> Asema if you are a, you are, you are a sinner. Sema kwamba ikiwa wewe ni mwenye dhambi. Do it to your best. Tenda hiyo dhambi kwa uadilifu. Because kwa hell is waiting for you. Manake jahanamu ya kufanya. You know it's very bad to go to hell when you committed a few sins. This is not a joke. Basi huu si mzaha. Church is not a place to come and waste time. Kanisa si pali pa kuja kuharibu muda au kupoteza muda. Jesus remained with the 12. Yesu Kristo alisalia na wale 10 na wawili. He looked at them. Aliwatazama. He told them even you. Akauliza hata nyinyi. You can go. Waweza mkaenda. Thank God for Peter with the revelation. Shukuru Mungu kwa Simoni Petro. Look at what Peter says. Tazama yale ambao Simoni Petro alisema. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Tunaenda wapi? You have the words of eternal life. Uh-huh. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Praise God. If you have come to Christ, where else do you want to go? That's the, that's the best place for anybody to be. Amen. That's the destination. That's where we were going. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sifa kwa kimungu. Sisi tulifika. Ama bado safari tunaendelea. We arrived. Nilishafika. We'll pick it from there next Sunday. Tutaanzelea kutoka hapo Jumapili jayo. As we as we look at the sound Bible doctrine. Tunapotazama mafundisho ya Biblia ambayo ni halali ya kweli yanayokubalika. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, my God. Dear friend, you may have watched this message and yet you are not born again. It's not an accident, but God's plan. All you need to do now is believe that Christ Jesus died on the cross and settled the penalty for all your sins. When you rely only on this finished work, you become the righteousness of God because all your sins are forgiven. You become a child of God with all the rights of a son. You will never ever perish because you have eternal life, the very life of God. You're welcome to worship with us every Sunday from 10 a.m. We are located at Umoja Inako Estate along Moi Drive, directly opposite the Umoja 2 Chief's office, Nairobi, Kenya.